Hello, hello, and welcome to Let's Talk About It. I am hello. Hi, everybody. How are you out there? I'm Natalie Scarlett, joined by my great, fabulous friends, Chris Lynn, Denise, hello. and Toya. Toya's holding it down. Hey, hey, hey. So Toya's holding it down at an engagement tonight, which is going to happen from time to time. So we're going to hold it down. Hope everybody had a good week this week. Everybody's good? Everybody's good. Yeah. Good so far, good week. Can't complain. What happened? I said, good week, good week. Can't complain. Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah. I um watched, you know, our topic today is about women supporting women. And I watched Red Table Talk uh, mm -hmm. with Jada Pickett. And they had Jamil uh, on there and Carrie Champion, who are some top ESPN hosts. And they are also African-American queens that are strong. And they talk about how they were put against each other and how they were rivals. But now these rivals came together to now form their own thing. And I thought that was so amazing. Yeah. But they were talking about the reality of how they were sort of, you know, not supporting each other, how they sort of had to, hey, Sandra, how they had to, you know, come to a place. And I, and, and I was so hurt to say like, wow, but it was so good. Yeah. You, know? Why, you know, why do you guys think women don't support each other or why are they mean to each other? You know, what do you think about that? How do you guys? Um, I would say fear, you know, um, fear, you know, you fear the competition, quote unquote. It's like, instead yeah. of looking at someone as kind of your equal, you know, someone you can grow with, maybe you all can exchange strengths and, and so yeah. that you kind of look at another female as, competition you know what if they reach the market quicker than i do what if they you know outshine me and it's unfortunate that we just can't lock arms with one another without feeling as if you know someone's going to take our place you know um i think we fall into that comparison trap because many of us deal with major insecurities and so if someone has something we we feel we want or desire or we're missing then we yeah. then instead of just connecting with them or complimenting them we immediately, you know, make them a foe. It's like that jealousy kicks in and we right. immediately start connecting with, you know, with the fact that I'll never be this or, oh, why do they have to look like that? Instead of just complimenting them, like, oh, you're so pretty or like your hair, you know, then we start, it, it's, I think it's really what we say to ourselves in that private time. You know, I wish my hair was like that or I wish I had this and I wish I had this business. And so right. what we're going to uh, repeat in our private space, it becomes our reality when we see the actual person or the women who are fitting in this space where we feel unfulfilled. And so that's when we become negative and aggressively kind of jealous, you know? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was good that they did. I agree with that. And I think it was great that they were able to really be transparent. One of the girls there said that she is not able to, at that time, she wasn't able to be vulnerable. So for her, she was more of afraid of, of showing her real self, right? And so she was more so hiding, shying away. Yeah. And that caused her, you know, but then she finally opened herself up and these two women who were, they said frenemies, enemies, you know, now yeah. they're doing great. So we gotta, you know, we, we, we're so mad about people attacking us or we're attacking each other. Yeah. The beautiful yeah. thing about that interview, and I agree with everything that you said, Chris. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the things that uh, Jamil did say is that it was never like demonstrated in front of them. I don't mm -hmm. think like it's demonstrated. It's more hate and like, oh, you know, I don't like her because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. But it's never shown like it's okay to say, hey, Chris, your hair is dope. That was the first thing I said mm -hmm. when we came on. Right. But that was something that, you know, we have to learn. And we also do have to show like the younger generation. Like it's okay to say, you know, to give somebody a compliment. Because mm -hmm. it's rarely that people give compliments to each other, yeah. you know. It's not you know, you know, the issue with that also, Nicole, is not... What I see a lot of times with females is not just giving a compliment, it's receiving it too. So that's yeah. something like, because somebody can be like, oh, your hair is cute. You'd be like, I just put this together. You know, you don't, know, like, you, you still yeah. feel all kind of way. Like, my hair yeah. cute? I don't know. So I think that's an internal battle that we all deal with and kind of have to start taking the practical steps to overcome. Because if I can't right. receive a compliment, how am I going to have the confidence enough to give one? You know what right. I mean? I, I mean, from my own personal experience, I have to learn how to take a compliment. You know what I mean? Because like when somebody would give me a compliment, 
I would never just sit in it and just say, okay, just thank you. But I would I would have to throw it right back to kind of get the attention off of me. You know what right. I mean? Mm -hmm. What does that yeah, come from? I agree with that. What you say now? What does that come from, Nicole? Like what 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 was that for you? Oh, that was just straight up insecurity. Insecurity, oh. not really knowing like how to like myself or like look at myself and say, hey, you know what? You just dope. You know, and as I age, you know what I mean, and get older. I'm, I'm, st I have stepped into that, but when in my younger days, mm -mm, I right. didn't you know it wasn't taught. It wasn't, mm -hmm. it was something that I had to learn as I got older. Right. And Christina Lewis says, Me too. I can easily give them, but I feel awkward receiving them. So many of our viewers, so if you feel a certain way, also go ahead and join our conversation and just go in the comments so we can see what you're thinking and feeling. Um, I agree so much with what you're saying. And, you know, Jada also talked about, um, you know, and, and, and not to follow her suit, but it just really resonated with me about women supporting women. Yeah. And, and, and and Jada said, you know, she went through betrayal of a friend. And we all have experienced betrayal. Yeah. Uh, and, I you know, where did that where did come from? I had a situation where I was going to speak to a women's group. And they asked me to give them my bio. And, of course, I sent my bio in. So the pastor of the church handed my bio over to the lady that was in charge of the women's group. And I heard her say, um, I'd like you to read this. So she, she didn't know I was standing behind her. So she said, oh, she said, why are you making that face? She goes, look at her. Don't nobody want to hear what she has to say. She hasn't been through anything. Wow. And the first lady took my bio and said, I got this. Wow. So when people heard my story of being in an abusive marriage, my story that I had to fight for my life and my children's lives, they sat there shocked. Be, me coming out of the business, the beauty industry, I knew how to put that face on. Mm -hmm. I knew how to cover those bruises. And I knew how to become what people wanted me to become. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things, like if you're the first something, like I was one of the first black women in a certain as a hair color specialist that traveled internationally. Corporations decided you're our one. Mm -hmm. so I do is now they put you in a situation. If another company decided they were going to have a black, then they wanted you to not be friends with that black. That yeah. was not competition. So a lot of times I agree with everything you guys are saying. But a lot of times they set us up to go against each other. Yeah. We're really not strong enough like they were to say, yeah. no, it's not happening. Right. And so you pick up and decide you don't like a person and you know nothing about them. And I've yeah. had many people come up to me and say, I had no idea you went through that. Yeah. Mr. Denise, really I, I do have a question. So when when the lady, when you heard the lady say that she didn't, that you had not been through anything. Did you did you feel like being petty in that moment and, and like getting revenge or what was your I mean, what was your I mean, first reaction? I was kind of used to it. Okay. Because which I'm sure you all can agree with. When you know how to beat this face, you know how to carry what goes with it. Yeah. You know how to bring it out. And you go home and get it back in your car, and everybody's like, Oh, she's so beautiful. Oh, she's so this and that. And in this industry. I know you all can relate. I've met a lot of women that outwardly look beautiful, but mm -hmm. inwardly were disappointed. Yeah. Outwardly, and I think the thing that hurts you is when the person is smiling in your face and you turn around and they're doing the dagger in the back. That's yeah. the part that yeah, hurts. That's the part that hurts the most because you're like, okay, what did you do? And then you get people that join them because mm -hmm. they're like you said, Nicole, they're insecure. Like you yeah. said, I didn't always pass the test. I, you know. I've okay. had my petty moments, you know, yeah. in those situations. Yeah. I had to learn how to not be petty. And still to this day, I have my moment where I have to be like, do I feel like being petty in this moment or do I feel I like I don't be transparent? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And I think for me, I've, I've, I've been through um, a situation where, and I think Jamil talked about this in a show where everyone is in your corner, everyone's caring for you, but they're only caring for you because you're in a certain position. And then I'll mm -hmm. and they're gone. And you're like, what was this? You know what I mean? And you know, you, you gotta treat people at face value of what they give you. You can't just judge people, right? And so 
Mm-hmm. And then when you leave and abandon, you're like, what the, what the heck was that? You know, mm-hmm. and we're all sisters, you know, it's okay. And I remember in that moment, somebody else, I, mean, I think I think it was Sonia Seller. I remember her calling me. She wasn't someone I talked to every day. And she's like, I just want to say, how are you? Yeah. Say, I love you. That's huge. Right? And, and you don't know how huge that was that one person was like, I am praying for you. I love you. That's it. Mm-hmm. You need anything? Yeah. You guys, and it was like, wow. So for me, it's like, we have to support each other. And, yeah. and we have to go to, and, and like she said, she didn't even know Carrie. Carrie didn't know Jamil. They didn't know each other. They both were just bad, great anchors on ESPN going for the same job. Yeah. With the game. And here it was, you know, they were pitted against each other and began yeah. to allow it. But when they saw people begin to tear each other down and how vicious it got, yeah. they said, so wait a minute, let me go ahead and the center slide in her DM and support her. So it's almost like, you know, for me, it's like you owe that to your sister to get to know her. Yeah. Yeah. Not every, and I'm not saying everybody has to be in your circle. Right. Or, but you owe it, you know, we all have our people in our village, but sometimes outside of your little villages, people out there you might meet that you owe, you know, let me just, let me just see what person's like. Yeah, you know, it's that United Front, but I will say this, Nicole, I had a situation with someone, again, in ministry, and they had said some really awful things. And so when I would go and that person was leading corporate prayer, I would literally walk out. Mm. And then I had to realize, what am I missing? Maybe God is showing me something and I'm missing it. So yeah. what I did is he had me one day confront her and I told her that I had an issue with what had happened and it was interfering with my prayer and I needed her to know. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing about a couple of uh, weeks later, she came and apologized to me. Yeah. For the situation. And then it was like, it was good, but I had to, I had to say it because I, my face showed it all. Yeah, so I'm yeah. in public prayer. I'm supposed to be praying. And my face is like, mm-hmm. like <laughs> yeah, me, I think my thing was, you know you mean, but you up there talking about, let me praise the Lord. Right, right. I'm here. But you mean, you can't say hello, but you mean. You can't even speak to me. I, I, I'm going to tell y'all that. That's a, it, mm, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to have to step up and be honest, Denise. I've done that to you. I, I, did, I, I looked in the about face and turned around and looked. <laughs> And I said, okay, God, I got to grow past this. I got to grow past this. But I sure did walk out too, okay? Yeah. But uh, Roseanne said, hey, ladies, great combo. Such an important topic. We have to change the narrative of a woman being petty, catty, unsupportive of each other. We have to start supporting each other and remember that we can all succeed and get rid of that scarcity mentality. There isn't, there isn't only room for one. I love that, Roseanne. You're right. There is room for all of us. Yeah. Right. I have a question. So, how do you guys handle like when you when when you have reached that mean girl that used sarcasm, and then they they hide it with girl, I'm just playing. But there's some truth in your sarcasm. I, I, I call them out. I, like, I, I started calling them out because I, I feel like you know if you I mean it goes back to that old saying like your mom used to give you you know if you don't have anything good to say don't say anything at all. But the mm-hmm. fact that you allowed it to exit your mouth means there's some kind of truth attached to it, and yeah. so. Let's be honest right here in this moment, you know? And so I just, I mean, I had to learn that even people closest to me who do that, you know, I had to sit down with them and just literally talk about it. Like, okay, how do you feel for real? Because this isn't something like, I don't just speak, you know, things that I don't mean, whether I'm playing or not. It came from somewhere. It came from a thought. Therefore, there's something behind it. And so let's be honest. Like, how do you feel about me? And we need to address that instead of carrying that with you. Because what I've learned about a lot of, Friends, you know, male or female, you know, whatever relationships, what you deal with are people with idle minds who, you know, literally think of, you know, those people who just think of things just based off of your actions, but never address them. And so, for example, you can come in one morning and just be overwhelmed and you forget to say hi. Now, all of a sudden you stuck up with a bad attitude and then they go (laughs) back to their home. And they start conjuring up, well, she got a bad attitude because I remember one day when she looked at me strange and I knew it was something. And then all of a sudden they created this entire problem about you and it's not even real. And so now they're treating you funny and now they're being sarcastic. And it's like, no, if you want to talk to me. And so if you're not willing to be bold enough to talk to me, then let me address the issue. Like what's really going on? I love that. I when love you that. Down, do that. I mean, I know many of y'all who might have done that before. Then it's a laundry list of stuff that unfolds. You're like, I never did that. What are you talking about? I hold on to that. Yeah. Yeah. At least you don't address it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And, 
And you just want to be able to, I, I think when it comes to being, especially a woman of God, like you, we have enough love to be able to address it in love, you know, not coming petty, not coming with an attitude, but let's be honest, you know, because I'm starting to feel and sense uh, some issues here. And I just want to make sure all is well, you know, when you hear that, they, they have all kinds of stuff about you that you're like, I never even knew, you know, yeah. you're right. you that. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of uh, being room for more than one, I have <laughs> Melanie Few that is not here coming on. Melanie Few is the founder. Yes, there she is. Hey, Mel. Hi. Hi. Hey, welcome. Hi, Hi. Hi. Hey. <laughs> president of her results marketing company and the creator, founder, and CEO of Super Bowl Gospel Celebration Mixing gospel faith and everything with football how creative are you ma'am very good to see you here today <laughs> thank you so much thank you for having me i've been watching you ladies over these last i think two weeks so you asked me two weeks or three weeks yep, now, yep, on three weeks now. Yep. yes ma'am three yes. weeks i've been watching and i've been i've been inspired by your testimonies and conversations so i truly appreciate you having me i was wondering natalie's like my little sister i'm like Excuse me, when is she gonna call me? <laughs> yeah, I've, been, I've been trained by by Melanie Sherry and some people, so I was like, you know, let me tap into my resources. Here. <laughs> tap, tap, tap in. I was like, okay, I guess my little sister called me at some point. Yes, yes, yes. But Melanie, I was we were just talking about. I mean, do you wanted to say anything about Savoy Gospel Celebration, you know, at all, or do you just wanna? Well, I guess yes. what what I, what I can do is talk about how i started it because and, and how it came about because i think that is my testimony one one of my my testimonies and i, I kind of have to take it back to childhood when i was a little girl my and, and this leads to where i am today when i was a, a small girl my parents when they would tell me no for something for whatever reason i wasn't afraid of spankings i don't know why I but uh, know. When, they, <laughs> when they would tell me no I, you know, I'm, I, I would go back and ask him in five minutes and it got to the point where every five minutes I would say, well, is it still no? So I had to get a spanking and then I still go back in 10 minutes and say, well, is it still no? I took the spanking <laughs> and now I need to know, is it still no? Yeah. And I think that kind of led to what I'm going to talk about because um, when I went, I went to a Super Bowl with a friend who was the vice president uh, of the National Football League Players Association. And her husband had to work and I end up not, you know, he couldn't go. So she said, hey, if you want to come down, you know, just come hang with me, sis. I said, okay. Well, what I realized, and this was my before Christ day. So honey, we were partying down. Do you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was partying from six in the morning to six in the morning. And so I noticed that <laughs> we were having a ball. So I noticed by, you know, by that Saturday night, I was beginning to feel kind of like something's missing. And I, I grew up in the church and my mother was a pastor. And so I, it hit me. I said, you know what? I wonder why they don't have a gospel celebration aligned with Super Bowl. Because I ain't gonna lie, I was feeling guilty by Sunday morning. Okay. <laughs> I, had, I wasn't being fast in it, but I was... I wasn't being fast. It, it wasn't like, you know, out there freaking or anything, but I, I, I love to dance. I mean, we have been clubbing back. Okay. And so I said to her, I said, wonder why you guys, nobody has a gospel event around Super Bowl. And she says, you know, I don't know. I wonder how that would do. So she says, well, why don't you propose it? And I said, okay. So I wrote the NFL for seven years and I had seven oh, years of rejection you. left. I, rejection. Them, I have rejection letters that I still have because wow. I get down sometime I go back and look at them and I look at how far God has brought me. Wow. And I wrote them from 1991 all the way to 1998. Wow. And I was rejected every single year my to God. the point. I'm sorry, you guys. You look all oh, girls. I had a piece of hair on my lip um, <laughs> to the point that my friend, because we have lifelong friends. She said, OK, they beginning to think you a little crazy and your name is floating now <laughs> you're looking, looking kind of crazy girlfriend 
So I said, okay, well, I won't, I won't write anymore. Cause I didn't want to make, cause people knew that she knew me and I didn't want to make her look crazy. Mm -hmm. So she said, well, I tell you what, I'm going to run it by Gene Upshaw. I said, well, will you go to Gene just one more time? Gene was still alive and he was the president and CEO of the NFL Play Association. So he was like, I know how to get rid of that crazy girl. He said he loved Gladys Knight. And he said, tell her if she can get Gladys Knight to do Super Bowl gospel that um, I will I will let her do it and we'll pay everything, pay all the bills and wow. she can just produce it and we'll pay her. I said, what? In your head, she he was like, he didn't know, right. he didn't know my aunt. He bet, thought that was bet. his way of getting rid of me. Oh. He didn't know my aunt went to high school with Gladys, okay? Oh, that was so I, told, I told him, I said, wait a minute now. I'm from hey. Atlanta, and Gladys is from Atlanta. So, I mean, he was laughing because he didn't think I could do it. I was like, he going to fool around, and Gladys and I going to ride the midnight train from Georgia all the way to Miami. <laughs> We go fool around and ride and all the way to Miami from Atlanta because he's like, she ain't gonna make it happen. She ain't gonna make it happen. So when I, I mean, I I called my aunt, I called Gladys Label, I called friends. I literally I ended up, you know, negotiating and coming up with a deal. I was so scared because if he wasn't serious, then I was gonna be stuck with this bill for Gladys. <laughs> and I told my dad, I said, Dad, you gonna help me have to help me pay because you know I'm I'm out here on the limb now. I don't know if this man is for real, but I gotta go with it. Yeah. So when he saw that I was serious and I had Gladys, he could not believe it. And that was in 1999. Yeah. And that was the very first year <laughs> that we did the Super Bowl gospel celebration. So the first year we had Gladys, Fred Hammond, uh Dawkins and Dawkins, you remember them, Natalie? Mm -hmm. Y'all yeah, remember Dawkins and Dawkins? Yeah. That's when, yeah. and, and I'm gonna be quiet, and we're gonna go back and forth. But I have to tell you this: God is so good because that first year, it was just me. I didn't have any staff. I didn't have any volunteers. Nobody. I think people could hear me talking, and they were, you know, how people they can't really visualize what God has given to you, and yeah. that's okay. Mm -hmm. and, and I was down there in Miami on my own because my friend was working. You know, she's an executive. I didn't have anybody. It was me in a hotel room all by myself, wow. you know, and I was going to have to make sure that Gladys got picked up and what have you. Let me tell you what happened. They okay. sent a limo for Gladys. Gladys was no problem, but they had told me I had Fred Hammond and his entire group coming. And what they did, they had Cadillac as a sponsor, but they depended on volunteers to pick up acts and pick up um pick up players well because no these people were mostly caucasian people and they didn't know fred hammond's name i get a call at 11 15 p.m fred's flight was coming in at 7 45 a.m and they said we sorry to tell you this all of the volunteers have pulled out we we don't know what to tell you but there's nobody to pick up fred hammond and in any of his singers Wow. And and it's now it's like by this time, by the time I finished going back and forth, it's a quarter to 12. And I said, Lord, what should I do? All I had was me and a charge card with a limited amount of money on it. And I, I started trying to call transportation companies that time of night. No one was answering the phone. And this is I always share this testimony because I cried myself to sleep. And at 345 in the morning, I heard a voice saying, Melanie, Melanie. And I thought I've got to be, I'm asleep, so I got to be dreaming because I still did, I needed to get up because I still didn't have a plan. Mm -hmm. And it was, I, I realized when somebody really was knocking on the door, it was my best friend and two of my cousins. And they told me, my best friend said she was at her job. And she said at three o'clock at her job, a voice said, Go to Miami, Melanie needs you. And wow. she said, I'm not getting ready to drive way to Miami from Atlanta. That's what, 13 hours, you guys? Yeah. And she said, the voice said, go now. Tell your boss you've got to get off work. Go now. And so she called my cousin. And actually, it was my cousin's best friend who I consider because they were at their jobs. And she said, it's on my heart so heavy. I don't know what's going on, but Mel needs us. And they said, ain't nobody getting ready to drive no 13 hours for Mel? And she said, I'm telling y'all something. God is putting it on my spirit. Mm -hmm. They were knocking on that door. They showed up. They didn't tell me they would come. It was like 3.30, 3.45 in the morning. 
Oh, All I could do was just weep and cry. So y'all gonna lay down because y'all gotta go pick up friends. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I tell wow. that because God always has wow. a ram in the bush. And now you're 22 years, 22 years later. Yeah, you went to Oh my God, I can't even name them out of hosts. I can't even, <laughs> Snoop Dogg performed. We've had uh, Russell Wilson Awards. We've had NFL Choir so large. I mean, you're on BT. Uh, it's the biggest show every year. I mean, my God. My God is faithful. And you guys, you all don't know me yet, but Natalie, Natalie has been there, I got what, 14 years now, 13 years? It's been a while, it's been a while. It's been a while. Listen, I can't get her mad because she does have black male material, okay? <laughs> 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 but God is faithful, she, she, listen, she's not I gonna tell her. I was happy to be in the back of Wendy Williams, like listen, Wendy Williams hosting this thing, so I'm excited, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. But Melanie, but Melanie, real quick, you know, before OJ comes on, I wanted to ask you. Um, we were sharing that we were watching Red Table Talk with um Carrie Champion and Jamil and how they were, you know, how they were talking about how they were rivals and how people have put woman against woman. And you have become, you know, such a mover and shaker. How have you handled the women who hate you and, and the haters? Because you've been through that and the people mm -hmm. who betrayed you down. I, I've watched I've watched the tears you've shed in those rooms. You know, how, how have you handled that? You know what? Well, first of all, I think um, it. I've handled it different, probably than most, because I don't. I I sometimes have had a spirit of being naive, because mm -hmm. I love people, mm -hmm. and I'm a, a lover of people, and I'm a giver, and I don't have the kind of thoughts. I don't. Mm -hmm. my, my my mother used to say, "Do your fellow man no, you know, no, no, don't do him bad. Do put in the universe what you want back." So because yes. I don't I I can to this I cannot tell you of a person that I hate. I you know, I I can't say I, I'm in love with everybody, but I love everybody. So I think for in my case, um uh, when you walk around sometimes with the spirit of being naive about how people really can be, mm -hmm. it hurts even more because you're not expecting it. And it's because mm -hmm. you're not looking for it. And there have been situations where um I have turned into someone I didn't want mm. because I've been hurt by somebody and I took so much from these particular people till I end up seeing myself turning into the same person they are mm. because of hurt and because of disappointment. Mm -hmm. And so I, I truly know that there, there's room at the table for everybody. If yeah. God gave you a vision, he will make provision for the vision. And he, you know, and what happens is sometimes we block our own blessings because instead of us doing what God would have us to do, we out here trying to do what he gave somebody else. That's yes. right. And, and he won't bless the mess. He won't do it. Right. And so I, I just, I'm so grateful because to be honest with you, it, I have had it, I've, women and men, but mostly women, even though I've been hurt by some women in my life, there have been women that have taken me up under my arm and up under their arm and up under their umbrella and bless me and walk me into doors. I yes. will never forget. I'll never forget. And you know, this person I had a, we end up becoming dear friends. I have been trying to get a, a meeting uh, with a vice president of home Depot. And I it literally, I could took me forever. I couldn't get the meeting with this woman. And when I finally got it, the devil was so busy. I had a car wreck on wow. the way to do a, a do a presentation to a fortune 500 company to several executives. Mm -hmm. And so when I called her, the ambulance was there to get me. I called her from my cell phone and she was like, do you know how crazy you have me looking? She didn't let me talk at first. And she said, I've got all these executives in this room and you're 20, 30 minutes late. And I told her, I said, I'm in an ambulance. I've been in a car wreck to make a long story short. To this day, that woman is one of my mentors and one of my best friends and has blessed me and became a sponsor of Super Bowl Gospel. And, be, you know, and even as she's gone to other Fortune 500 companies, mm -hmm. she has always carried me along the journey with her and has been a sponsor. And even if she's at a company who it wasn't a fit for her to sponsor, she said, OK, here's what I can do. I want to personally let me let me pay for the food for the artist. Let me do this. Let me do that. 
So for just as many people that he has put in my life that were there to hurt me, he has put that same amount of people in my life to bless me, if not I mean, really more people. So I just say for women, you know, pour into the universe what you want back and that's what you're going to get. Uh, yeah. God will surround you with angels that you were not even expecting. Wow. That's right. I, I have a question. I know we, we got to move on. <laughs> but can you, because I, because I mean, everything you said is such a huge blessing. But can you mm -hmm. kind of honestly give like your honest, detailed kind of experience of what those days look like for you when you were rejected? You know, you're talking about seven years of, of rejection and you stay consistent and committed to the vision. And not only that, but even when you're talking about the Home Depot VP and you and our car accident, it's like, no, my, listen, if this is where God is leading me, then no accident, no rejection is going to stop me. You can seem depressed. What does that look like? What did that look like in your silent time? Like by yourself, without anybody in your corner, like what caused you to push forward? Well, let me let me take it here before I even go there. The seven years were the seven years and they were difficult, but I had a full time job. I think what has been even more where my testimony is is rooted is what happens when you start and people have a public perception of you and that, you know, you got it going on. I never forget. I booked uh, talent for Camden Yards years ago. This is when I first started my business and I booked the talent for the Pope's visit to the United States. And it was on a it was on a flirt that I got the contract. But my business was brand new and I booked boys to men to perform for the Pope. So when I got this contract and it was a small contract, but it was great exposure. When I got when I got back to Atlanta, it was in the newspaper and everything, you know, local small business woman, you know, books the talent for the Pope, you know, books boys to men. And I, I, I want to say I got, it was some years ago, I want to say I got $5,000. Well, you and I both know $5,000 is only going to go so far. So I'll never forget, and I have to tell you this because I know this is going to encourage somebody, that Christmas, this was like in November, October that I booked for the Pope. That Christmas, I was working retail. At, it used to be Rich's before it was Macy's. Yeah. And mm -hmm. these girls I went to high school with, they said, what are you doing in here? You working retail? And I said, yeah, I'm working for the holidays. They said, did you just book? It was all in the newspaper, whatever. And I said, yeah, but my business is, is new. And, you know, I don't, I don't have, I'm, I'm not on a solid foundation yet. And it's new. And I, I went into a dressing room and I cried. And God whispered in my ear. He said, they don't understand that it's a brick and a foundation that I'm going to allow you to walk on. Ooh. They don't understand, but they, <laughs> they will understand. Yes. I, tell people, I tell people that are self-employed, I tell them self-employment is joy and pain, is sunshine and rain, but if God gave it to you, he's going he's gonna to take care of you. He's going to bless you. I, I Even though here I am all these years later, before when before I was on BET and before I was on ESPN, I was doing this show all on my own. And this is even before the NFL became, you know, where they would support me. I was all on my own. I was paying all the bills and I'll never forget. And I'm telling you this because this is just real talk. I'll never forget one year I had to, I was paying all these artists, hoping the tickets would sell so that I could, you know, be able to pay the bills. I was deep in debt. All my charge cards were full. And I will never forget. And this, my dad's 94. And this is one of the reasons I thank him to this day. I called and I was crying and I said, dad, the tickets, it's a walk up crowd. They won't turn the lights on because I haven't paid the venue light bill. And he said, put them on the phone. And I'm talking about to cry. And he, 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 he told the venue manager, he said, take my charge card number and run my card right now because I can't, you can't do my baby like that. You can't do my daughter like that. She's put her life on the line and you cannot do this. He said, can you take a charge card? If not, I'm on my way to Western Union because the show going to start in 40 minutes. And my, you can't have my daughter looking crazy. And I say this because when I say God will put angels in your life, mm -hmm. one of my angels is my father. Mm -hmm. 
And Natalie will tell you the sacrifices, not just my dad, but people like Natalie and uh, friends and family, the sacrifices that people, people see the person whose name is behind it, mm -hmm. but they don't see the people that are on the front line making sacrifices for you, leaving their families, leaving their children, their husbands, because God gave them a mandate to come and love on you. And I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, these 22 years, if it were not for my parents and my friends, my Natalie's, my OJ's, my, I could go on and on, all the people, Pam, I would not be here. I, there's no, I would not be here if he had not mandated these people to pour into this vision. And that's why when I get an opportunity, I try, I pour back into other people because I would not be here had it not been for them. Well, well, Melanie, well, first and foremost, I can listen to you all night. Yes. I am so glad that, well, one, that you didn't allow those people to um, change who, who you are because your light is just like so strong. You see, I'm sitting here like eating it all up. So I'm thankful that you didn't stay in that place because we would not have the opportunity to meet you. So thank you for that, first and foremost. Yeah. Um, thank I you. Love, I love all the nuggets that you're giving us, especially about uh, work in the retail because a lot of people just cliff jump without a plan, not realizing your bills still need to get paid while you build that dream. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So that's, I'm glad that you touched on that because I know I have that conversation a lot with a lot of people that you still got to fund it. You know what I mean? You still got to work yeah. at it, but I'm just, this don't ever hide your light. Your light is, is, is beautiful. Listen, oh, I'm, I'm going to get off because I know you got to have OJ, but I got to tell you one more thing, Natalie, because I think this will bless the ladies yes. that are looking at this. Um, Kirk Franklin was literally my first client when I first started. I met Kirk at a convention and he told me he, he had the family and he told me he had all these people on his payroll. He was a gospel artist and I, he had the one song out. You're the reason why we sing and convinced me. I told him I had just left my job and he said, well, maybe you can help me sell sponsorship. And I didn't. I was like, I don't know. Da, 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 da. He convinced me. And I end up taking him on as a client. He couldn't pay me. So I had to make my money based on what I did. And I got to tell you this. And I'm going to let you guys go. I tried to sell Kirk to different corporations and I wasn't getting anywhere. And two things happened. Um, I had befriended all these executives at Coca-Cola, but they wouldn't take my, my calls. They wouldn't keep they didn't keep, they didn't think I was serious. They didn't really know Kirk that well, but his he was building his brand and his songs were beginning to get kind of known. So I have to tell you this because I want your listeners to be relentless when they are going after God's calling. I had become friends with one of the secretaries at Coke and she told me, she said, all of the vice presidents of marketing are going to be in one room together on Friday. And she said, this is what you need to do. You need to send a proposal through the electronic secretary. So the electronic secretary, Coke was been, been ahead of their times for years. It's a robot. And the mailman put everything on the robot and it goes in, in this program where to stop. Mm -hmm. So I got a friend of mine, I did all, I had been sending them proposals, but they weren't looking at them. I took the proposal and Kirk's Christmas CD and put them in these beautiful Christmas boxes. And I had my friend wrap them just beautiful, satin bowls, just cascading. So I put 12 of the boxes and I tipped the guy in the mail room at Coca-Cola so that those 12 beautiful boxes would be on that electronic robot secretary and would go down the hall right when all of them were in the room together. And so <laughs> they were all meeting. This is how I got my first contract with Coca-Cola. They were all meeting and they said, oh, my God, those who are those for? And one secretary said, it's one for each of you right here on the electronic secretary. And uh, they said, oh my God, let's just take a break so we can open our gifts. So needless to say, they opened the gifts and the gift was still a Kirk Franklin proposal and his Christmas CD and it was a proposal for them to sponsor his holiday tour. They said, this fool is crazy. But they, called, but they called me and they sponsored his holiday tour and gave him $100,000. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about, you know, I just wanted to share that because I, I want to talk about never be afraid to do whatever it takes, That's that, right. you know, according to God's will. That's right. And Mel, you, you are an angel. You are, you are brilliant. You are creative. You are sassy. You are loving. You are giving. 
and you are just so blessed and we're so excited and Super Bowl uh, gospel celebration will be virtual this year, but we all will still be watching. I don't know if you've announced the host yet, so we'll wait for the host and everything else, but we are very excited to support you and we love you so much. And we are bringing on uh, someone that you uh, happen to introduce me to. Who is yes. Sis, you really should have just had the whole show, you know? <laughs> no. too, too big, too big of a personality. Okay, I got to have the whole hour. I'm going to be quiet. I you love it. No, 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 no. You don't have to be quiet because every time, you know, we're so yeah, close, but every special. time we talk to each other, uh, I learn something new. So it's awesome. Yes, so this is Ulrich Johnson. Ulrich is also one of my brothers. Hey, O. How are you doing, sweetheart? I'm doing good. So Ulrich good. Johnson is former NFL player for the New England Patriots, Minnesota Vikings, uh, New York Jets. He's yeah. also a singer, songwriter, actor, producer, executive producer, and he is doing it. And he's our, our friend and our brother, and we're so happy. He's the lead singer. Of the NFL, one of the least, one of the least singers in NFL. Of everything. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> my daddy's grandson. Hey. So OJ, we're talking just about this vision and man, and just you know supporting each other and yeah. you know um, women supporting each other, and so you know you are a man, and maybe your perspective because you've also been through a lot of haters too, even though I know they're they're men. But we're all still family, you know. How have you been able to accomplish what you're doing and also be able to maintain, you know, your faith, family, and football and really, you know, talk to us about that? Uh, well, you know, you said something that, you know, haters, you know, and I and I hate to, you know, sound like, you know, haters, 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 but I don't look at them as haters. It took me a while to it took me a while to not to not understand why everybody wouldn't want you to win. It took mm -hmm. me a long time because I didn't grow up in that kind of culture. Um, my parents were just always very positive. They always said to me and my all my siblings, I got nine of them, but they always said to me and the crew, uh, which we call each other, um, how we have to be. Um, we don't, they used to say, we don't need friends. You, you, you guys, there's so many of you guys, you, you can be, your, you, you can have other friends, but you know, you guys have to support each other. And they would always tell us because the world is not always going to support you. But I didn't necessarily understand what that meant until I, you know, got a little older. And actually, really, until I um, went into the NFL, I started realizing that people weren't really around me or wanting to spend time with me or wanting to be with me and all that stuff for the right reasons. It wasn't because of my personality necessarily. It wasn't because they really loved me and cared about me. It really was because they was trying to see what they was going to get out of me, whether it be monetary, whether it be close enough to me so they can uh, meet someone else or get in the door with someone else and network, whatever it may be. And it still happens to this day. But I didn't realize that until I was a young adult. And it took me a while. And it took me a while because some of my best friends, you know, people I knew since elementary and middle school, uh, who I bought houses for and, you know what I'm saying, and all this stuff, you know, would do anything to make money off of me, off of my name, would put me in the bad business deals, all kind of stuff. I mean, I can go on and on. And some of that stuff really, really hurt. But, you know, at some point you have to learn that, you know, uh, you can't, you can't trust everybody, you know what I mean? And you have to change your circle sometimes because everybody can't go where you're going. And if uh, and God will put people around you who are going where you're going, who are like-minded like you. And it's not just about how long you knew somebody and known somebody. It's about who he's putting in your pathway to help you grow, to become a better person and get where you need to go. That's right. That's good. You know, one of the things that I'd like to say, I, hello, OJ, hello. How you doing? My first yeah. time meeting you guys. I've heard so much about you, but you both are such a wonderful example of when God gives you a vision, he wants to know where you stand on it, no matter who comes. Mm -hmm. And you guys are giving us such, thank you so much for giving such an amazing example. And I think that how you know how you felt and how you expressed that hurt 
because everybody feels it's an easy pathway. But mm -hmm. I, I have to say, how did you feel about knowing it at that time that now you can move those out the way and then God brings you people in that have your vision and have your heart? What was your discovery, you know, your moment of discovering that? For me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, it was it was a lot of uh, harsh conversations with my wife, you know what I mean, uh, who's been around me for a very long time, but we never try to, we're very, we're in very, very different paths. She's a doctor and I'm in the entertainment and sports world. So we always respected each other's lane, but it was, it was her, you know, just honestly what she did one day is she set out all the things and the people around me that had burnt me, if you will. And, and she basically was like, why do you still have this around? Is any of this helping you? And wow. the way, the way that I, the way to answer your question, the way that I came to it, um, came to the realization and the way I felt, um, like I said, it still took me a while, but I still, what I had to do one day is just basically do this. And there was a couple people. But I had to basically call them and say, you know what? Um, we have a great past. You know what I mean? You still make me laugh. I still love you like a brother. I still love you like a sister. Um, but uh, that's all we are. That's, we're not going anymore in the future. That's what we are. We are. We have a history, and I love you. And I will always love you. I probably should hate you, but I can't do it. And I tried to hate. I tried to not like people, you know, that I that had been in my past that had burnt me, but I just could not do it. And I, you know what? And that's okay, you know, because as I read the scripture and, and God spoke to me, that's not what, what God is. You know, God is a loving person. He he forgives, you know, and I guess that's something that's just always just been inside of me. So when I try to do something that I am not or that he has not made me to be, um, it don't work for me. It just doesn't work for me. I can't, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't go into a room and um, somebody can really have done me, done things bad to me, but I can't go into that room and hold grudges. I can't do it. Right. You know, mm, I just can't yeah. do it. You know, I can't, especially not too long because all I see is a person that is, that is, is a person that made a mistake because at the end of the day, I know, that I'm going to be real. Everything I lost will come right back to me. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, God is going to continue to bless me over and over again like he has. I can't lose because of who I serve. Yeah. It's just that simple. Yeah. I have a question for OJ and Melanie, uh, especially for the audience that's listening. So you guys talk about how you had to pivot from out of the hurt into who you are right now. What advice would you give them how to get this and this right, right? So they can pivot and be and, and to receive everything else that God has and not and not be stuck in that place of, oh, I can't do this because you know these people hurt me, so I would never trust again. How would you what advice would you give them to move out of that place? No, you go baby. Okay. You go. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, cool. <laughs> well, you know, my, my, my advice is to still to be careful. And, you know, Natalie actually knows, you know, we have lots of long stories we can go into, but even, but even when we first, even when we first uh, became acquainted and that was a, that wasn't, you know, that was a wow. purpose type of a, a deal when we, when we just, organically came into contact with each other but as we as we started to talk about learning um to to as we started to talk about working together and as she was god was putting on her heart everything that i needed and i knew it was what i needed at that time i still took her through the ringer a little bit you know what i mean just <laughs> and she not even a little bit just getting to know her you know like yeah. i was over the top but it was because i've been hurt so i'm not gonna sit here and say um, you know, I, it's so easy. And I don't want anybody out there who might see this to say it's just a snap of the finger, easy. No, because we do have to learn from our mistakes. Mm -hmm. And it's according to our personality how far we take that. Because I'm just easy trusting. I'm an easy trusting person. So now I I am very, it's hard to get into my real close circle. It, it really is. I'm always looking at things from, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Um, and so I would say to people, you know, you still, if you, if, 
if something has happened to you and you've gone through things, it's not, you, it's, you, we can't, like Jonathan Nelson says, we can't keep going through cycles, you know what I mean? We can't continue to go through cycles and cycles. So we do have to do things that are best for us. But once we once 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 we get confirmation uh, you from God and you know that that person fits into your life, then you just have to you know be be free and be willing again to be open to whatever you know comes. You know what I mean? And just prayerful that He'll you know He'll protect you in those relationships. I hope yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Wow. Um, I want to ask OJ a question because. Melanie's on, obviously, and you became one of the leasing of the NFL choir. I mean, you know, how do you feel about joining this whole NFL choir? You know, a lot of people I know, I mean, it's so huge now. There's so many players yeah. every year. It just grows. And I'm, I'm just amazed every year. I'm like, these more guys and active players and yeah. retired players. <laughs> and to see them all praising God, I got to tell you, it's amazing to see you guys up there. They wear robes and everything, guys. So, I mean, <laughs> travel and they go to different places. So how... How is it being in the NFL choir? Well, it's still it's still an amazing feeling to me. Like it, um, and I know a lot of people see it from like a, a certain standpoint, but I think the with the guys, we it's more like everybody wants to be a part of a team. And when you came up, when you come up being a part of a team all the time, and most of us were never part of sorry teams, we always were part of good teams, which is how we got to the levels that we got to. Um, but when you, when you go through things together and you, um, and you, and you practice all the time and X and et cetera, et cetera, those bonds are like amazing and they never go anywhere. But with the NFL players choir, it was something once again, that God gave Melanie. I don't even know if she even understood what was happening happening when she started the Super Bowl gospel celebration and then organically we we're practicing we're not practicing but we're playing around backstage just I mean we're just playing around goofing around you know what I mean and then Patty hears us and then Patty's like uh uh and then she starts bringing people on stage <laughs> Patty, LaBelle, sing, right. Patty LaBelle I'm sorry Patty LaBelle and just kind of puts us on the spot and then we started and Melanie definitely started saying oh this could be a good idea it's amazing how every year, um, yes, like Natalie said, more pe more guys, we invite other guys. It's a family, you know, at the end of the day, like it's a team, which teams, really tight teams are families. The, the, the most amazing part for me is, and I'll tell a quick story and I'll shut up. When I was with the New York Jets was my first team, um, I felt out of place because when on, Tuesdays were our only day off and that's when we would get a chance for the, the priest or the chaplain or the, the bishop or whatever in that city who would come and do Bible study. And then with the New York Jets, it was me and one other guy. That was it. You know what I mean? And if no coaches, nobody else. And I felt like, man, I always felt like I didn't belong. I felt like that since high school. Like it was like, um, you're not nasty enough. You don't curse enough. You don't drink enough. You don't smoke enough. You don't you don't sniff, sniff up cocaine enough. Whatever it is, you don't you don't. I'm a, I'm a ladies man. I, ain't gonna, I have my issues with ladies, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> but you know you don't you don't club enough. Whatever it might be, and I always felt like I didn't fit in. So the Jets was that issue, and it was that year. That was my rookie year. It was that year that I was introduced to something called Cause, which is Christian Athletes Youth for Spiritual Empowerment, which was mm -hmm. set up by Reggie White, the late Reggie White, love him to death. And there was Chris Carter, there was Randall Cunningham, there was uh, all these people. And I was a rookie and they were all like in their 14th, 15th year leaders and future Hall of Famers. And they took me in like, whoa, you know, they took me in and they could tell right away that I was different. I was moved to the Minnesota Vikings and in the middle of the season, I got traded and it didn't make any sense. Bill Parcells, who was the coach of the Jets at that time, brought me in his office and he said, after one of my best games, like I had like four sacks and two interceptions and it was like crazy. Everybody on the team was loving me. And he brought me in. I'm thinking I'm about to get a new contract. And he was like, we got to trade you. And I was like, huh? That don't make any sense. I thought he was joking. He said, I don't even know why. He said that. He said, I don't, I don't know why. 
He trades me to Minnesota. And that's when all this beautiful stuff starts to happen. Call starts to happen, which introduced guys, those veterans, introduced me to the Super Bowl gospel celebration, which became my family, if you will. And there's yeah. more to that. Uh, Dan, I don't know but, if you know this. You're the very first, you're the very first player I ever built a relationship with. Because what happened when in 2000, Reggie White, it, 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 OJ yeah. is so endearing and so loved by so many people. And he was so young at the time. Reggie White and Chris Carter was like, what's up? Why baby boy? Now, I didn't know who they were talking about. They said, why baby boy not on the program? I said, who is baby boy? They were like, OJ, you don't know OJ? <laughs> and Troy and, and so Troy, they, yeah. brought him, they brought yeah. OJ Grant to Hill, the uh, Super Gospels down at their Paramount. And I, mm -hmm. I think Reggie gave you the mic, didn't he? He did. He did. And and that and, and that's, that's crazy. how we met. Yeah, it's crazy. And I, I was these are guys that I like idolized. Remember, this is my rookie year. Um, but and I gotta say this with what Mel said, when I got to Minnesota, um, which introduced all this stuff, Randall Chris Carter said, I didn't even know Chris Carter. Chris Carter said to Randall Cunningham. And I have to say, it was two people with the Jets. And then when I got to Minnesota, there was like a Bible study with the whole team. That was the difference. That, that's what God wanted me to be. The whole team was there at Bible study. That's from two people. That's you know what I mean? And then and it was a buffet and because we had a Christian coach. And everybody was like, it was like everybody was just, this is what we do on our off day. And um, Chris Carter yells across the room. He says, Randall. There's your guy. This is like my first day there. I don't even I don't even know Chris Carter. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, how did he know me? So Randall, there's your guy. And Randall walks over to me very humble and he says, Do you do you sing? I say, Yeah, I sing. He said, Do uh do you play? You play an instrument? I say, Yeah. He said, You play more than two instruments? I say, Yeah. He said, Do you um do, do you, um, he said, do you know how to read music? I said, yeah. And I was just, you know, going on, yeah, I was trying to see where he was getting at. He said, do you write music? I said, yeah. Have you ever sung background for professional artists? I said, yeah, I sung for Gloria Stefan and, and uh, John Sakata and Betty Wright since I was 14 years old. He said, you toured with them? I said, yeah. <laughs> he said, man, I was praying that God would bring you to this team. Are you serious? God is amazing. God's amazing. God's so while amazing. I'm thinking, while I'm thinking something was wrong, and I'm crying because there's all this snow outside, and I'm from Miami, and I ain't never, I never been in this much <laughs> snow before, and I don't yeah. know what a scraper is, and and the coach doesn't know why he traded me. It was a setup for what my future was supposed to be, like. and it has a lot to do with this. Yeah. These people right here. Look at this. <laughs> Shut up, look at God. So it's amazing. Wow, what a what a divine amazing. okay. Yeah, but you know, OJ, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, and OJ and I met at the after party, sitting at an after party, right? And yeah. Melanie had to introduce us, and we we're just sitting there, and we're like, uh, what's your name? <laughs> yeah. I think my feet yeah. were a lot of Melanie behind the show. He like, who are yeah. you? <laughs> right. I know Melanie. Let me go check him when she really do know her. <laughs> right. Because I'm a, I'm like, I'm not the person. I'm a, I'm very much so a people's person once I, once I get to know you. But I'm not necessarily always the networking kind of guy. So it was after that. And I just, this, this was a time where, when I met Natalie, it was a time where I like, I'm always around all these people. I befriend them, but I don't follow up with them. I don't, you know, it, I'm not like that kind of guy. So I was saying to myself at that time, I needed, I knew what I wanted to do. In the transition of my life from sports to, to the entertainment industry, I wanted to get back to it. And I was saying to myself, I need to stick around this party and just kind of maybe I should introduce myself to somebody. And all the boy, all the homies was like, come on, man, all the guys from the team and other guys on the way. Let's go, man. It's getting it's, let's go to another club. Or let's go somewhere else or whatever. And I was just <laughs> like, man, let me speak to this. Let me speak to this young lady right here. And I just I just spoke to her. And when we started speaking, you know, that's kind of how we met. Yeah. Then he ran the background checks on me and everything else, and we were good. But <laughs> yeah, I ran background checks every day. But, uh, 
But no, so you know your voice is amazing. Yeah, you know, OJ also toured. We, you know, we got him with Tyler Perry. Melody had friends there. I had friends there. We got him from the Tyler Perry, and he's mm-hmm. went on tour, and the rest is history. So, you know, we have to ask you to sing. You know, we have to. So, you know. No, nah, we ran out of time. <laughs> we ran out of time. <laughs> <laughs> we can just do it on another show. No, no, Brian McKnight. Let me see. I'm always like, yes, Brian oh, McKnight. No. Huh? You got you to do something. You got to do a little Brian, you know. No, yeah, you got to can you do that, please? You said you would, so. Um, yes. I did. Why I said, why I tell you that? Because I'm really not ready, uh, ready to sing. But yeah. I, I don't like singing in places like this. I'm in my basement. All right. <laughs> no, I don't want to sing Brad Manai. Oh, you um, all. I'll sing. Why not? Brad? Hmm? You want to sing Brad Manai song? I, want hmm? to sing. <laughs> I can't hear you. What'd you say? <laughs> Is it the one Brian Brian? I don't know, just whatever. The one with Christ so dope. All right. Um, Chauncey's singing in the background, our producer, you know, yes. Yeah. yeah. Who? Chauncey's in the background? Yeah. <laughs> Is Chauncey filming this? Oh, nice. What's up, Chauncey? <laughs> All right, go ahead, O. Oh, what's up, man? All right, cool. What's up? I didn't know you was here. All right. Um, My fair dreams. Broken hearts, I'm mending on the shelf. I saw you holding hands, standing close to someone else. Now I sit all alone, wishing all my what feeling was gone. Gotta get over you. Nothing for me, me to do, but I one last cry, one last cry before I leave it all behind. I gotta get you out of my mind for the very last time. Stop living a lie. I guess I'm down to my last cry. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Robert McNear, Chris Lynn's wonderful. Mm-hmm. So that's over Brian McKnight on the mat, that song. That's right. <laughs> and Rob, Rob, you coming on. I haven't so. sung that song in like four or five years. I on here, Mr. Rob. Yeah. Are you going to put Brian on the. Oh, uh, wow. I'm going to put uh, yeah, Rob. Make him sing. Husband, men's panel. Yes. I'll do a men's panel. Nice. Okay, that nice. was amazing. amazing. Thank you so much for blessing us with your Thank you. gifts, your time. I absolutely love you and Melanie. You guys are my family. Amazing. That's so right. Cool. You all came on here to support all of us with Let's Talk About It. Yeah. Cam Swain says, sing it. Oh, Johnson. Dominique says, sing, sing. <laughs> we had to say that. <laughs> It's been amazing. This has been some good stuff. We've got to get a part. And, a part and Den- Denise, Nicole, Chris, is uh, am I saying is that everybody? Yeah. So uh, I've heard so much you got so much about you guys. Is it is it Chris? Yeah. I've heard so much about you guys, and you know Mel is so excited about what you guys have started, and um, praying that you guys stick together. And keep it going because I think it's going to be a great platform. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited because Nicole asked me if I knew, and I said I knew by faces, but my sister is um, Sunday Morning Joy, Hot 105. She's been doing it for 20 years. And so, Paula Hawks, that's my sister. Yes. Uh And when Nicole said, Do you know? And then when I said, I go, That's what my sister's always talking about. She loves, it. she loves it. Nice. So awesome. it's wonderful to put nice, faces, nice. names to the faces, and to hear the stories. Thank you so much for being so honest, because we're called to this industry, and you guys are such a wonderful example of doing what, in your spirit, you know you need to do, and, right. and being obedient to it, and in the yeah. end winning. And thank you. OJ, we didn't talk about your, your your childhood sweetheart being the person that knew your heart and is still oh, yeah. there for you. Oh, like, man. Yeah, 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 that's amazing yeah. for yeah. 
day one. I told them that just yes. you. you guys love stories. So blesses me. Yeah, yeah. continue blessings. Yeah. He, his wife is beautiful inside and out. He is so blessed. They're blessed to have each other and two beautiful children. Wonderful. Yes. This has been, this has really warmed my heart. Yeah, I wasn't running around here trying to get on yeah. camera. Oh, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? No, little O. Oh, little O. Yeah. Let little O say little hello. O's trying to get on camera. Bring little O on to say hello. No. If you, if you, <laughs> little O doesn't like to wear clothes. He doesn't like to wear clothes all the time. So yeah, I mean, this, is gonna <laughs> this has been a blessing for us. I mean, yes. faith, family, and football. Yeah. I mean, transparency, supporting each other. Yep. I am, I am full, and you know, I was just sharing with the ladies earlier that God just says, just launch, just do it. Like Melanie, just write those letters. Like OJ, you know, you got traded. You know, you're upset about being traded, but look how you got traded for the setup. You know, so for us, we just launch. Mm -hmm. like, you know, God, God will grow us. He will, He will show us how to do it. Just yeah. keep it simple and just do it. And that's all we're doing is just, just giving Him the platform and what He wants to do with it. So we are just so blessed. So excited! Thank yeah. you both so much for sharing. Thank you, yeah. thank you. guys. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Being here. Thank you for having us. Oh, yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you both. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. See y'all later. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, wow. everybody. That was awesome. Yes. That and was we're just happy that people are still live. So we're just happy that everybody. Um, thank you all for joining us today. All you yes. viewers who are here. You got blessed. I mean, please, if you did not watch it live, please rewatch it. Some good nuggets. Check out the Super Bowl Gospel Celebration that's going to be airing the Sunday, uh, uh, Friday before Super Bowl. Um, just keep watching what Melanie's doing, Ulrich is doing, and uh, support each other, love each other, be open. You guys want to leave any nuggets, any words you guys want to leave with the viewers? Anything anybody want to say? Share this feed. Share this feed. I, I, I checked in my sister. So she can yes. watch it and yes. share yes. share yes. this yes. wonderful yes. testimony, man. Thank you guys so much. Oh, Cam, thank you. They said you guys inspire me. Thank you so much, Cedia yes. Wilson. This was great as usual. Love you, ladies. Oh, we love you too. Thank you so much. Yes. We're so blessed. You guys take your time out to watch with us. Thank you yes. so much for joining. Let's talk about it tonight. You guys have a great night. We will see you next week Thursday. We are going to have Brian Scott of Atlanta Falcons. Coming Ooh, on, wow. week. yes, and a uh, great family guy. Fate family football continues next week, Thursday, at eight p.m. Have a great night, everybody. See you later. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. See you later.